Hello everybody and welcome to Organius Puzzle Box. Uh, in today's uh, tutorial we're going to go through how to add some um, complex collisions to your meshes. Let's say you've imported a mesh in Unreal Engine that's got a complex geometry like stairs, uh, platforms and so on, maybe a house or something like that. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can easily create a shape uh, out of your mesh to uh, match your original mesh to be used as a complex collision, uh, basically in Unreal Engine, which then allows your characters to walk inside this building, for example, uh, climb stairs and so on. This is a very important step if you actually want to get your um, meshes to be interactive with the environment. So it's very important that you get this done correctly. Um, as I've said, my tutorial really goes into that using Blender and Unreal Engine, Engine 5. In this particular case, I'm using nanite meshes as well, but it doesn't really matter. This works for normal meshes and nanite meshes. It's quite simple and quite straightforward. So let's begin. Okay, so first things first, let's just assume that this is your mesh. This is a quite a complicated mesh. As I said, it's got nanite enabled as well. But let's say this is your mesh and we're just going to open that mesh and then we're going to go into its collisions just to have a look. Now, I've got it set up as block all, use complex collision as simple, and then this is the mesh that I've loaded in to tell us where the collisions are. If we double click it, we can see the actual collision. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not exactly low poly, this can be optimized even further, but this is sort of the shape that Unreal Engine is going to read to use as a means to block your character as it progresses through this world. Um, now, if we go over into our mesh and then we go into show and select simple collisions, this is what Unreal Engine would give you as a simple collision. If we use this, your character will obviously uh, be blocked by these areas. So if we actually change uh, this to simple, so project default will go to simple collisions. If we now go into the world and start playing again, you'll notice that we have an issue with our collisions. Uh, first of all, I can walk through some of this stuff. As you can see, there's nothing actually blocking me from walking through some of the meshes because this is what simple collision does. It doesn't, it just calculates uh, an overall shape of the object, but it clearly doesn't do a very good job at interpreting it very well. So what I'm then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into uh, these files over here. Uh, just so we can have a look again. If we switch over into use complex collisions as simple, then it's gonna load the complex um, collision mesh that I've put in, right? So how do we create this? That's the, that's the question. And this is where Blender comes in. Now, what I've got here is I've got a copy of that mesh, which by the way, you can see that it's got individual bricks and so on into it. So I've got a copy of that and I have now got it into a state that I can use as a collision. So we're actually gonna do that very quickly just so I can show you and then we'll load that into Unreal Engine and then you can see how that's actually being used. Okay, so this is the mesh that we've got. As you can see, it's got about 602,000 faces. Because I'm using this as a nanite, I don't really care about the, the poly count, but we obviously can't, can't use this as a complex collision uh, mesh because it would just destroy our performance at this level of faces. Plus, I don't think Unreal Engine would even be able to cope calculating the collisions based on this amount of polygons. So what we want to do with our mesh that we're actually, you know, this is the same mesh that we've got over in here, the same, literally the same one. Um, what we want to do now is go into a modifier in Blender and just add a decimate modifier. Now you don't need to know how to use Blender to do this. Literally when you open Blender, this is what you're going to see anyway. So this is, you just gotta be on this option and add a modifier as a decimate. Now you'll leave it to collapse and then you're going to set this number to 0.1. And what this does, it will take your entire geometry and basically un subdiv un well, sort of collapse the geometry on itself so then it has a lot lower polygon count. So right now it's got 100,000. We're then going to apply this modifier because now we can add a second decimate modifier and again, we'll, we'll do that to decrease um, the poly count even further. So again, click over here, select decimate, uh, decimate, whatever it's called, and then do another 0 0.1. And this takes to 10,000 polygons. Now, if you're happy with this, then that's fine. You can already see how the shape has changed over into these areas. 
uh, while doing this. So you can see that they're not exactly square, they're a bit triangular. So you may want to go to maybe a 0 0.3, which then gives you a better shape on that. And again, you can apply that modifier and then again, add it once more and then go to a 0 0.2. Again, that's too much. So you may want to take it to a 0 0.5. Um, 0 0.5 still not enough, 0 0.4, yeah, 0 0.4 looks to be even better, 0 0.3, too much, 0 0.35, again, too much, so 0 0.4, apply again, and let's try it one more time, decimate, uh, let's go for 0 0.4, you can see that it's literally destroying the geometry too much, and again, you can manually do this, so I'm going to leave it at zero, uh, I'm going to leave it at that setting. You can do this manually, but imagine doing a ma you know manual uh, collision for a mesh like this. This is this would be insane. Now, in a uh, environment where you're making a game or whatever you're doing, you wouldn't want collisions in areas where you're not actually going to use it. So what other people would do, they would just create simple collision around the areas around this base and the platforms themselves. Maybe separate the the geometry in such a way that it's easier to do, but we're just going for a very clean, uh, very quick effect to add collisions to your scene. So we've got that done. Now all we need to do is export the FBX. Uh, make sure you've got selected objects only, and then you export it as whatever, whatever name. I generally put a UCX at the end or at the front of it, just so I know that it's a collision. You press export and that's basically done. Uh, once the export is done, you go back into Unreal Engine, and now you can open you can you can open your well you can bring the content browser again. Uh, I'm in Unreal Engine 5, so uh, Control Space will bring that up. I've got myself a uh, folder uh, specifically for mesh collisions. Now this is that particular collision that I had earlier, but this I've already made a new one, so I can right-click this one, select Reimport with new file. And then I can select the new, um, you know, the, the new uh, mesh that I've exported as a collision, which is this one here. And I'm going to press open. This obviously will uh, re-import the mesh uh, in here, which is fine. Now, if I go back to my tower and open it, you can see that it's already using that. But let's just let's just from arguments let's just take it off. And we say we definitely want to use complex collisions as. Um, um, you know, for for our project, we don't want to see any simple collision. We just want to see the complex collisions. Uh, I can then type in the name of the collision that I just brought in. Sorry, that was was tower. Uh, so there it is. UCX tower destroyed. I can then click it, and now you can see how the collision has been calculated, and Unreal Engine is now seeing every one of these objects as a collision point as well. So again, if you go back into the game, that's already done. Uh, very interestingly, you know, interestingly enough, you can actually right-click the collision, go to Nanite, and enable it. And uh, obviously, this because it's such a small mesh, this applies Nanite quite quickly. Now let's just play from here and just see if the collision works. Um, and as you can see, it does. Now, this is very this is very nice because with Nanite, you ensure that your collision mesh is actually quite efficient. So I don't know if this was an intended thing from Epic, you know, if they actually wanted to have this done, but it's very nice because even though you obviously over spec on the collision, it was quite high because you're using, using Nanite, it is limiting it to, I'm thinking it works. You know, I have no real proof to say that this actually works as, at the minute, but I haven't seen any real problems by, you know, me enabling Nanite on this mesh. It's very interesting, but as you can see um, over in here, I'm just trying to find the uh, Nanite setting. Okay, so hmm, that's, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, so it's already applied. I don't know why, I think this was just bug. But yeah, you can see it's already applied. So if I apply changes without Nanite, or if I go to Nanite, nothing really changes over on this end it's still reading the mesh as it should. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? And it's really, really handy as well, by the way. So that in theory is how you use uh, complex collisions in Unreal Engine. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Um, I know it definitely helped me to work out on my uh, scenes that I'm putting together. So again, having simple collisions for your meshes means that you can also use phys physics with it, which is very important. 
Um, what you'd want to do going forward is use complex collisions wherever you have meshes where there won't be any any sort of um, uh, said physics or anything like that. Or maybe you want to add invisible objects in there in which you will have a simple collision so we can interact with physics. But then obviously your actual meshes themselves have complex collisions. So there's a lot of ways to go about this. Um, I'm just glad that I found a good way to be able to have rooms that are, you know, you can walk through, you can do all sorts of things in them. And a lot of games use obviously complex collisions as simple collisions. Um, what they don't have, well, what they do have in general is just a budget limitation. So you've got to really be careful with that. I've just shown you a very quick way to set up collisions where, you know, you'd be struggling to do so. I know there's not enough content around this on, on YouTube or anything like that. So I hope this tutorial is going to be, it's going to prove quite useful to you. Please leave a like and share if you found this useful. And uh, yeah, let me know what other topic you'd like me to cover in the future uh, for Unreal Engine or anything or Blender related. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.